was an iconic show that left a mark and gave children paralyzing nightmares on so many people that grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. I remember being a kid and walking around with a little iPod that my mom had where she had put the Bratz Babies movies on and also a few episodes of Goosebumps. The two episodes that I remember being on there was that one with the like the cat in the movie and then there was the one with like the weird possessed sponge. That little sponge's face is engraved into my brain. What I'm trying to say is that it was a freaking iconic show and it still is iconic. R.L. Stein is the brain behind the Goosebumps franchise and what a genius he is. Now listen, as much as I just hyped up Goosebumps, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. No. I'm here to talk about his other beloved horror show, The Siblings Goosebumps, if you will. R.L. Stein's Haunting Hour. This show aired on the TV channel The Hub. Yes, I know, it's an unfortunate name. October 29th, 2010 and ended on October 11th, 2014. It basically followed the same format as Goosebumps where each episode was a new story. And this series was absolutely insane. And dare I say, way scarier than Goosebumps? <gasps> and there is one story in particular which I think many people will agree with me on that was absolute nightmare fuel. And I still stick with that opinion as an adult. Ew, I hate that I'm an adult. That's scary. Why am I old? The story spanned over the course of the first two episodes of the series, Really You Part 1 and Really You Part 2. The story revolves around a creepy doll, which immediately brings the scare factor up a little bit. And I do want to make a point before I start talking about these episodes that I actually had a discussion with my family about these two episodes, like the other day, specifically about just how horrifying they were. My dad said, and I quote, it was scarier than that Megan movie. My sister also got her teacher to put it on for her class last semester. What did I get? I'm talking about the uh, haunting hour. Oh, I did, I did, <laughs> I did. I'm talking about how scary it is mm. and how it still holds up. It royally freaked out my class. Did it actually? Yeah, they were actually scared. I don't blame them. Mm. Oh, it was good, it was good, I like that show. <laughs> so there you go, that's your warning. High school students were scared of it. <laughs> It's true, I'm still scared of it. I just rewatched it. Did you? Yeah, I did. Without me? Sorry, I was writing the script. That's rude. We can watch it today. It's not the same. Okay, so I mean, first of all, the intro of the show had no reason to go that hard. Needless to say, my timbers have been shivered and I am shaking in my boots. We start off in this doll factory, doll heads everywhere lovely. This lady's working on a doll and she looks into its creepy eyes and is like, this is wrong, you're not good. And then proceeds to yeet the doll. If she wasn't good before, I'm sure she's not gonna behave for you now. We transition over to this family's house and there's this bratty kid who's going, when my order? Her dad had ordered something exciting for her and we don't know what it is yet, but obviously she's very excited. She's on this website and she's demanding more purchases and the kid is like, make it work. Her older brother is really annoyed at her because she's a whiny little brat. Anyways, a car pulls up in the driveway and she's like, yay, my order! She goes outside and the car is like waiting outside for her. A lady in a fabulous pink suit jumps out and is like, hey squad, you ready to meet her? And then like shows the bratty kid to the car. You'll never guess who her is. And no, I'm not talking about the popular singer. Uh, her. Her is the creepy bad doll from the beginning. So as it turns out, Lily, who is the main character, I probably should have introduced her earlier instead of just calling her whiny little brat, got this doll as a gift from her father from a company called Really You. This company's whole deal is that they design custom made dolls to look like their owner. And it's a big deal to get one too because they freaking came up in a car and were like, hey. They were like, usually girls go to the salon to get some like bonding time with their doll for an extra $200. So Lily meets this doll that looks exactly like her called Lily D, which by the way, it really doesn't look anything like her. Lily D looks like there is not a single thought behind those eyes or not very pleasant thoughts at least. Anyway, she does end up going to this like salon thing, which is really just a way to rob parents and kids of their money. Lily invites some friends over to play dolls and she's like, ah, I got all of the amazing extra stuff for my doll being all like whiny and bratty. She must get humbled. But I don't think I can get the furniture and stuff. No. <laughs> That would be weird, you know, just having the doll. I think it'd be more odd if you were spending your parents' life savings to get this inanimate object a cell phone. One of her friends brings her doll over to Lily D and she's all like, Lily D told my doll that she didn't like you, Lily. Which, okay, that's horror movie red flag number one. If some kid starts claiming that their doll was saying some shady stuff to them, burn it with fire immediately. That's a horror movie rule. Lily gets pissed off and then rips the leg off of the little girl's doll and then Lily starts to gaslight herself into thinking Lily D likes her. The mom gets mad at Lily for breaking the little girl's 
doll and Lily's like, I don't care. The mom decides it's best to give Lily a time out from Lily D because of her bad behavior. So like, all right, take the creepy doll. Someone's thinking big things here. Lily throws a fit. So the mom grows this weird attachment to the doll I... I'm not gonna lie, that actually scared the cheeses out of me while I was rewatching it. The mom brings Lily D dinner and the brother is understandably very confused and concerned. Lily's all like, mom, can I have Lily D back? And the mom's like, no. The family leaves Lily and Lily D at the table to clean up and then Lily screams because that doll freaking moved. Gravy was spilled all over the mom's laptop. And Lily's like, it wasn't me, the doll did it. I see two Lilies. One has done something very, very bad and is telling lies about it. No, I'm not. The other is sitting peacefully like a well-mannered young lady. Which Lily do you want to be? Oh! Lily gets into her room because her mom understandably thinks that she's lying. Her brother goes into Lily's room and is like, Lily, why did you do that? That was freaking crazy. And she says, I didn't do it. I swear. Lily D did it. She... She doesn't like me. Then Lily says Lily D wants to hurt her, so. The mom is pissed off that, you know, her laptop is ruined and the dad's like, you know, it was probably an accident and she started lying and then she got embarrassed. And then the mom was like, I am sure it wasn't an accident. If you hadn't spoiled her, we wouldn't have this problem. And whoa, ate that. Her brother goes to her parents' room and is like, I'm really worried about Lily. Uh, she thinks Annabelle's sister is alive. And the dad's like, you are stupid. Again, the mom starts to have a weird attachment to the doll. Ew! The doll moved from the parents' bedroom to the hallway. The brother goes to the bathroom and just sees her sitting there. And the dad was actually in the process of moving Lily D back to Lily's room. Which I mean, why? Why would you put her back there? Lily was clearly freaking out about the doll. So why are you just gonna like randomly move her in there so she's gonna think that it like got up and moved into her room to harm her? Not a smart move, dad. Ew, 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 Why is that horrifying? That's genuinely horrifying. The dad wakes up and Lily D is back in the parents' bed and is facing him. It's morning, Lily comes downstairs and she's like, my neck is like really stiff. And the dad's like, you're fine. The dad asks if she's ready to apologize to her mom. And she's like, I didn't do it, okay? Like, I don't know, I don't know what you think I'm saying, but I didn't do it. The mom is giving everyone breakfast and she gives Lily D breakfast and almost forgets about her daughter. Her brother's like, that's odd. Lily goes upstairs looking for Lily D. Girl, don't. Why? And Lily D is freaking roaming around and Lily starts feeling sick. The mom comes home and Lily is like passed out at the kitchen table with paint on her hands, not suspicious at all. So the mom goes upstairs to her bedroom and then starts screaming. There is paint all over the wall with the words, bad girl. Lily insists that she didn't do it. And then the brother is all like, Lily D isn't alive and I'm gonna prove it. On to episode two. Lily is crying in her room and her brother comes in and is like, why don't you just freaking admit to what you've been doing? And Lily still insists that it was the doll. We're just gonna have to go talk to a therapist and they'll have candy in the office. And stuff like that. Why would you say that? The actress for Lily ate this scene up, by the way. Do it. The brother then sets up cameras in their parents' room in attempt to catch Lily D if she moves. Uh, which spoiler alert, she does. I won't lie when I say I jumped. The next morning, the brother checks the camera and the memory card is missing. That's so weird. I wonder, I wonder who took it. Lily D. He then confronts the mom about the whereabouts of the memory card, which I mean, why would you do that? Cause you kind of set up a camera in a room, which is really odd. PSA. Don't put cameras in your parents' room. That's really weird. The brother then calls the mom out for acting weird towards like the Lily D doll. Like why is she so close to it and acting like she's a person? And while that's happening, Lily passes out on the floor. Lily goes to the hospital and is getting checked out. Meanwhile, her brother and his friend are dissecting the doll. And what I mean by that, it's literally what it sounds like. They're literally like pulling this doll apart, like looking at all of it. They discover that on the back of the doll's head, it says, destroy this doll, which is a warning, a warning sign, don't freaking keep picking at the doll's head. And they screwed up Lily D's head and she was annoyed. The brother and his friend sneak into the really you doll shop to go, you know, see what's going on. It's closed, so they sneak in. The doll maker walks into her workshop where their two are currently hiding and she sees them and calls them spies for the company. She's annoyed at the company because she regrets selling her business. They assure her that they're not spies and in fact, a doll has come to life, which you figure she would be a little bit more shocked about, but uh. They show her a pic of Lily D and she's like, 
Oh uh, yeah, about that. She's supposed to be destroyed. The company people promised they would destroy the doll and they didn't deliver. Elsa them. But then the doll maker goes on to like justify why she wasn't freaked out that a doll came to life. And that's because apparently all the dolls have souls. Every doll is good though. And they're content with being what they are, you know, a doll. But Lily D didn't want to be a doll, which, okay, I feel like that's reasonable though. Anyways, the boys leave the doll shop. Lily gets back from the hospital and is just sobbing uncontrollably. And she tells her mom that she's going to try and be a good person. Again, the actress ate that up. Lily goes to lie down in her room and finds Lily D with a hammer. Lily D breaks the mirror in her room. The mom hears the commotion and runs upstairs and is like, what the frick did you do? The mom scoops up the Lily D doll and says, I wish you were my daughter. Oh, okay. That's a little far. The mom leaves Lily's room and Lily tries to go after her, but she falls to the ground because her limbs start turning into doll limbs. Okay. Lily crawls to the mom's room, but before she can reach her mother, she turns fully into a doll. And Lily D takes her place as a human. And it's like her, like it looks like her. Lily D becomes a suck up to this family and makes them breakfast and all of these luxurious meals and becomes like the perfect child. And also she was a doll. She didn't leave the factory before this. How does she know how to make these meals? Like, is that a superpower? Can I have it? Please and thank you. Anyways, the brother realizes something is up. And also Lily in the doll can like tell that all of this is happening a little tear rolls down her cheek anyways the brother starts questioning lily d and lily d threatens him lily d then throws lily in the trash which messed up the brother figures out that they swapped places and when he goes to the trash can he realizes that there's a birthmark now on the doll that lily has and he's like hold up hold up that's that's lily now that lily's the doll so he tells the mom what happened and then goes after lily d who's now like sprinting away and the mom realized something was wrong because like when they were in the house she was like this does not smell like lily this is like not the same vibes as lily and then she saw the birthmark and she was like oh my gosh this is crazy i just have this feeling that that that's lily so the mom starts bawling her eyes out and she's like i love you i'm sorry and bam Lily's back to being a girl. She like transforms in the mom's arms. And then Lily D starts transforming back into a doll. And then she goes out in the street and ends up getting run over. Um, some kids find her and they're like, oh, it's a doll. And then she moves and they all get freaked out. Anyways, that's pretty much the end of that storyline. Although I do believe in a later season, there was a continuation of this story. Although I cannot remember anything that happened. I do know that Lily D was an attempted unaliver though. I think she tried to unalive the doll maker with a fishbowl if I remember correctly. I don't know. But yeah, needless to say, it's a very iconic episode and it's really creepy. It still holds up its creep factor. Again, I rewatched the episode for this video and I will admit I got pretty spooked out. All right, listen, call me a crybaby all you want, but it was scary, okay? The freaking doll's eyes, man. The eyes. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I love The Haunting Hour. I love Goosebumps. So if you guys want me to talk about maybe the continuation of this storyline or any other like Goosebumps Haunting Hour type things, please do let me know in the comment section because I had a blast making this video. Again, I really like the show, so I would absolutely love to talk more about it. And of course, if you have any suggestions in general for content you'd like to see me create, let me know in the comment section as well. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Peace out, Brussels sprouts.